All right, students, this is a short video on imaginary and complex numbers. So, first we're going to talk about the imaginary number i. i is always expressed as a lowercase in usually, if you see it typed, it's in italics. It stands for the constant square root of negative 1. Now, i is a symbol, like pi, that stands for this constant the square root of negative 1. Likewise, i squared is equal to negative 1. If you see i squared in an expression, you should be substituting in negative 1 and then further evaluating the expression. Now pause the video and make sure that you have these two math facts well documented in your notes. Now, imaginary numbers are used to simplify the square root of negative numbers. For example, if we had the square root of negative 9, we could think about it like this. We could think of it as the square root of negative 1 times 9. In other words, we're going to factor the negative 1 out from negative 9. And then we could write it as two separate square roots the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. Now, we know from the beginning of this video that the square root of negative 1 is equal to 9. And we also know that the square root of 9 is 3. And so we could evaluate the square root of negative 9 to be equal to 3i. Now, you notice that I put the i after the 3. We treat i as though it's a variable. Now it's not, it's a constant, but you would never write x3, you would write 3x. You would never write pi3, you would write 3pi. In the same way, we're going to write 3i. Now let's look at another example. How about the square root of negative 75? Well here, we're going to go ahead and factor out negative 1, and that leaves us with 25 times 3. Now, I went directly to 3 times 25 because I'm looking for perfect squares. And I know that 75 has a factor of 25, so I went right there. Then I'm going to write it as three separate square roots. And finally, I'm going to evaluate. Now, I know that the square root of negative 1 is 5. I know that the square root of 25 is 5. So I'm going to have a 5i in my answer. And... After we have that, we're going to put our square root, 5i square root of 3. Now, a number consisting of a real number and an imaginary number are called complex numbers. They're written in this form, where a is the real number and bi is the imaginary number. Here is an example, 1 plus or minus 3i. You might get an answer like this if you were solving a quadratic equation that had a negative number under the square root. You can perform math operations with imaginary and complex numbers. You can add, subtract, and multiply. You can also divide, but we're not going to get into that today. Uh, and you probably won't get into that until pre-count. But here we go. Uh, this is an example of addition or subtraction of imaginary numbers. And just as if i was a variable x, uh, I am going to subtract them like they're like terms, and I get my answer, negative i. Now here's a longer example. Everything in green here is one example. Now in this example, I am subtracting one complex number from another. And just like if I was doing this with an expression, I do need to uh, distribute that negative sign across every term in the second expression. So I end up with 2i plus 2, sorry, 2 plus 3i minus 7 plus 4i, and then I just combine like terms. I combine the real numbers to minus 7. And I combine the imaginary numbers, 3i plus 4i. And that's how I get the answer. Now let's take a look at multiplication. In multiplication, 
uh, in this first example outlined in red, I'm just multiplying 2i times 5i. I get 10i squared. But remember that i squared is equivalent to negative 1. So I'm going to substitute in a negative 1 in place of i squared, and my final answer is minus 10. In the uh, example outlined in blue here, I'm just multiplying 3i by 2, and I end up with a simple answer, 6i. But in this last example, I am multiplying two complex numbers. Now, in this case, I have to multiply 2 by every number in the second complex number, and I have to multiply 7i by every number in this second complex number. So I'm going to do that. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. 2 times 3i is equal to 6i. 7i times 4 is equal to 28i. And 7i times 3i is equal to 21i squared. Now, a couple of things catch my attention here. One is that I do have this i squared here, and I know that i squared is equal to negative 1. The second thing that catches my attention here is that I have like terms in the middle, 6i plus 28i. So I'm going to combine those here and get 34i. I'm going to substitute negative 1 in for i squared and um, combine my like terms. And I end up with an answer of negative 13 plus 34i. Now pause now and write down all of these examples. Okay, but why do I have to fool around with imaginary and complex numbers? Well, up until now, uh, if you were solving a polynomial equation, uh, like a quadratic equation, you were looking for the x-intercepts. And if that's what you were looking for, if those were your solutions, those were real number solutions. Complex numbers are a way to describe solutions to polynomials that do not have x-intercepts, and we refer to those as non-real solutions. So let me give you an example. Consider this quadratic. Here's the draft. The graph. Now you'll notice that this graph has no x-intercepts. So we are going to use imaginary and complex numbers to describe the solution of this particular quadratic. Even though it does not have a real solution, it has a non-real solution. So let's look. So we're going to solve it using the quadratic formula. I'm going to do this quickly. I'm just going to show you the work. I'm not going to describe the work. But you can see that we ended up with a negative 36 under the uh, radical. Well, we're going to simplify that to be 6i. And once we do that, then we can simplify the whole answer to be 1 plus or minus 3i. Now we're going to do a couple of, solution, a couple of examples. Um, step by step, so I'm not going to spend much time, but I do want you to pause and at least write down this particular quadratic equation and its solution using the quadratic formula. Now, uh, we're going to solve 3x squared minus 2x plus 7 uh, using the quadratic formula. So the first step is Substitute a, b, and c into the quadratic formula, and I have done that here. The next step is to figure out what I have underneath my radical. Well, I find out I have negative 80 underneath my radical. Well, that's a negative number underneath the square root, so I need to factor out negative 1, and then I need to see if 80 has any perfect squares that are factors, and it turns out it does. It turns out that 16, or 4 times 4, uh, is a factor of 80. So I'm going to write all that out. In the next step, I'm going to simplify the square root of negative 1. It becomes i. I'm going to simplify the square root of 4 times 4, which is 4, 
And all that I have left underneath my square root now is 5. Now I'm not done. I still have to simplify this. 2 over 6 is 1 third. And 4 over 6 is 2 thirds. Now you'll notice I didn't divide the square root of 5 by some weird decimal or by 3 and get some weird decimal because square roots, numbers under square roots, are not like terms with uh, other constants. So don't try to combine them like that. Pause now and write down this example. Now in class, I had you do this example, but if you missed today uh, or you didn't quite get it, here it is. So we're going to solve this using the quadratic formula. Our first step is plug A, B, and C into the quadratic formula. The second step is figure out what's underneath my radical. Turns out I have a negative 39 underneath the radical. Okay, so we've been talking about complex and imaginary numbers. I know I need to factor negative 1 out of 39 and then simplify it outside the radical. Now I'm going to look at 39. Are any of the factors of 39 perfect squares? I think pretty quickly if you do a factoring tree of 39 you'll figure out no, none of them are perfect squares and so this is our final answer. Now one last thing that we did not talk about in class and that is conjugates. You may be asked to identify the conjugate of a complex number. It is super easy. They have the same real and imaginary parts, but the imaginary part has the opposite sign. So the conjugate of 3 plus 7i is 3 minus 7i. The conjugate of 2 plus 9i is 2 minus 9i. Those are conjugates. Now, it's your turn. If you're going to write the conjugate of 4 plus 11i, of course that would be 4 minus 11i. Likewise, if you were going to write the conjugate of negative 3 minus 2i, then the imaginary part has to have the opposite sign. The real part stays exactly the same. So it would be negative 3 plus 2i. Now that is the end of this video. I hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, uh, then uh, email me or uh, take your question to whoever is on duty for tutoring. Peace out, people.